Hey everybody, welcome to the Sunken World Saga. This is a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition live stream. Uh, definitely live, definitely a stream. We're not a river. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? So, uh, tonight we, we have uh, four groups of four player characters, and tonight we're returning to the adventures of the A-Team. Uh, so I'm going to have them introduce themselves, and then I'll give a very brief recap, and then we, we will be uh, starting... And media res, or in the middle of things. Uh, so first of all, we've got Ash. Hi, everybody. My name is Ian Donovan Highland. I play Ash. He is a uh, halfling warlock, guardian of rebirth, whose uh, patron is a baby phoenix. After Ash, we have Arden. Hi, I'm Logan Back. I play Arden. Um, he's got knives and swords, and that's really his whole deal. That's right. After Arden, we have Aster. Hi, I am Connor Tolles, and I am playing Aster Snowborn, the quirky and weird sweet little twink boy um, who is a druid. Mm -hmm. That's what it says on his character sheet. And then we have Adira. Hi, my name's Emmy. I play Adira Signoza, who is our cleric paladin. Alrighty. Um, and so we have these four adventurers. Um... They have recently come to Seldomus, the capital city of the Hallandor Empire. Uh, they came here for two reasons. To find an enchanter uh, who enchanted the sword that Arden now uses, um, and to track down Sacerdos, one of the high priests of the sky god Dior, the uh, patriarch of the Hallandor pantheon. Find him, they did. Uh, they found both the wizard and the priest. Uh, they went to Skygate Temple, the largest temple to Dior, and they began to climb, uh, fighting some of the priests uh, within the tower as they went. They finally reached the top after getting some help from an elderly blind priest named Columbard, um, and they got to the top and found that it was literally on top of the tower, where... Sacerdos was enacting a ritual using an item known simply as the chalice. What makes the chalice unique is it is some, it is a large black onyx cup that uh, is capable of brewing within a potion that can kill gods. Or a poison, other than a potion. What's a potion but a poison with an S? With a T. Uh, I know how to spell the <laughs> party were able to defeat Sacerdos and a paladin of a different god who was working with Sacerdos for some reason, even though the plot was to kill every god other than Dior. So that was weird. Uh, but the party managed to win, even though the uh, top of the tower shot up into the sky. As soon as they left, however, they were arrested by the Minister of Writing and Law, named Julius Sextus. After a large carriage ride that they were forcibly invited to take, they ended up in a room to be interrogated. While they waited, uh, Columbard, the priest that had assisted them, gave the idea to Aster that perhaps the meeting that Julius Sextus said was so important that he needed to go and have, uh, perhaps someone could listen in, find out a little bit of detail about it. And Aster did and managed to bring back a pair of documents. A declaration of war, uh, well, a response to a declaration of war by the Emperor of Hallandor, and the response by the Ryoth, who several set heads of state uh, were meeting to discuss how best to handle. When Aster returned, he got in just in time for him to turn back into Aster, and for Julius Sextus to return to begin interrogation. And we're in Dungeons and Dragons time, everybody. Julius Sextus has entered the room. He has a tray. On that tray, there is a pot of what looks like tea, because it's tea. Uh, and then there are uh, four small plates. Each of them have a small bit of ham, a few slices of different cheeses, and a little bit of bread. Uh, it's like a baguette sort of deal. It's like it's like a charcuterie for an individual. And uh, he also has a bottle of wine, and you see six goblets. He brings that in, and he walks over, sets it on that table, 
he walks back out. He walks back in. He has a chair and a little box. He puts the chair down, and he sits, and he puts the box in front of him. From out of his robe, he pulls a few lines of parchment, and he looks at each of you and says, uh, We will begin. Uh, please, help yourself. I'm sure that you are hungry. You had a very large day, didn't you? Vera fights back the growling in her stomach. Yeah, Sir just immediately starts eating. Yeah. Can I make an insight I'm going to go check? pick some up <laughs> to uh, see if it's, like, poisoned or something. Uh, sure. Well, just wait a second. Ash already taken a bite. Oh, yeah. Ash, <laughs> Ash knows he, it's not possible to stop. Nope, not sure. <laughs> Arden is going to pour uh, a glass of wine and hand it to uh, Julius Sextus he takes first. It. And, and he then he's going to pour his own. Yeah, he takes a sip immediately. Clever. All right, yeah, I'll I'll start. I'll have some wine. I'll start eating. Can I? Can Adira inspect the food to make sure to like see if there's any noticeable traces of like if it's been tampered with? Yeah, if there's like little poison flakes. Yeah. Yeah. Poison flakes. The smell was off or anything. Put them in your mouth. This is within the rules set out by the Food and Drug Administration. Okay. Um, what do I roll? Insight check. <laughs> uh, roll a nader check. <laughs> roll a... poison. Bye. <laughs> oh no! You you uh, you get real mad at now, Ralph Nader Lord. because Al Gore didn't run a good enough campaign. That's a great joke. Right back. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you you can't tell anything about this food. Okay, Adira is going to. I also don't think Adira knows really that much about food. I think she just enjoys it. Um, she's just gonna take like a few few slices of the baguette and cheese, uh, but nothing to drink. Okay. Uh, yeah, and he uh, looks up at each of you, and when uh, Logan gets back, I will say what he says. Um, so essentially, the air of the room is, uh, this is a pretty comfortable room. You feel like it's, you know, you you don't really feel like prisoners. You feel like guest prisoners. <laughs> um, like, you have all of your things. It's just kind of, you know, you're here. And you feel like you can't really leave. But the door wasn't locked to your recollection. It was just a an understanding between you and your surroundings that this is how it is. Um, um, more of a formality than anything else. Can I? I want to crawl under the bear rug. And then stand up where, like, the head of the bear rug is over top of my head and just walk around with it. Okay. Ah. Yeah, you managed to do that. And I have a, I made a sandwich um, out of two pieces of the baguette, a couple pieces of cheese, and a couple pieces of meat. I'm just going, like, ah, with the sandwich in my mouth. Ash is just watching <laughs> perplexed. I mean, like, what else could he do in yeah, this moment? Julius Sextus had gotten out like a quill and a piece of parchment to start writing, and he just puts them down and, like, knits his fingers together and watches Aster walk around for a second. Aster knows that he snuck out and that he has these two pieces of paperwork on him that would indicate that he snuck out, so he's, like, act inconspicuous. But <laughs> to him, that means... Do weird shit, because usually when he does really weird shit, people don't pay attention to him. <laughs> so he's just, like, upping the weird right now. <laughs> Adira, with, like, a mouthful of cheese and crackers, is like, <laughs> cheese and crackers is like, he normally does this. <laughs> but he's normal. Right, well, I'm glad that I was able to, we were able to make him comfortable by having a large enough rug. Uh, <laughs> Now, uh, before we begin, I would just like to say, please do not waste my time. Uh, do not lie to me. People have been lying to me the majority of my day and the majority of my week, and so on. And I assure you, 
truth is much more interesting. So, may I have your names? The real names, is he, if possible. Is he telling the truth about people lying to him? Make an insight check. Is he being truthful about people lying to him? I'm sorry, I just like that. Oh, about. nat 20, 28. Uh, yeah. You actually get the sense with that, it just in his voice, you feel like this guy is very, very hard to lie to. Okay. He is very good at sniffing out a lie. Okay. Man, now I feel uncomfortable about all the times I've lied to Zalfia to in front of his face. But who is that? Who is she? Who's, She's not here. Who's Althea? Um, so please, uh, your names. Hi, Asha. Ah. All right, that's Aster. He writes it out. I'm Adira. Adira. Any um, last name? Sinoga. Adira's face, like her face, is she's just sort of like puzzled. Like, why does that matter? He, uh, you notice, he seems like he's trying not to smile when you say that. Uh, can I, can I make another insight check, but like on him specifically to see if he knows my dad? Yeah. Twelve. <laughs> yeah. Uh, seems like he knows your dad. <laughs> Or seem, well, with a 12, it seems like he knows that name. Okay. He has heard Not rolling well tonight, but that's that fine. name before. Really? Okay. Huh. Really, like that's my last name, or...? Yes, I, it's just a incredible coincidence. You wouldn't be of any relationship. You wouldn't be of any relation to Santa Nica. Seen enough. Uh, Adira's face suddenly falls. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. Um, if you would like to speak to him, it can be arranged. Thank you. Uh, uh you. And he points at Arden. What is your name? Um. Most people know me by Arden. My real name is Alphonse Percival von Ostenwald. What? All right, thank you. Ash, Ash just looks over and is like blinking really fast. <laughs> you lied to us this entire time. That's not your name? No, it is my name. It's just a different name. So. Also, if you have any, you know, wonderings about. If I'm a liar or not, you could send an envoy or a letter to the Von Ostenwalds, and they will assuredly tell you I am a liar, which is how you know um, that is not the truth. Yes, and uh, which door would you tell me to go through? Thank you, uh, Mr. Ostenwald. Uh, and you, uh, Master Huffling. I believe you said your name as someone else was speaking. I apologize, I did not get it. That's him talking to Ash. Oh, uh, sorry. Were you were you talking to me? Um, my name's Ash. Very good. Uh, uh, any last name? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> All right, I believe you. Yeah, like I'm sorry. Some, like... No, it's some folk from Oil Nakon. They they do have names, but I know that some do not. I'll probably ask everybody else if they have a last name, but not me. You are, you. A, you are a member of the Druid Order of Yorn, correct? Yeah? How'd you know that? Uh, you're a tiger. I've met many Druids in my time. I'm sorry, can you say that again, Ben? Sorry. You're a tiger. I've met many Druids in my time. Oh. Uh, no. Yeah, we do like we have like a dress code. It's not like formal. I uh, know it's. Uh, and he just sort of <laughs> up and he just sort of like takes a hand and goes up and down. Astor's whole deal. Um, 
Now, as I said, please do not lie. That is not what I would like to hear. I have uh, heard enough about the situation. I am aware of what was happening. I am not intending to arrest any of you. However, there are things that must be done in order to maintain order. And that means that you all will be required to pay for damages, for a frightening appearance to the folk of Zelenus. What I would like to do is simply ascertain what you should be paying. And so I promise you, honest answers will, uh, will lower the price. Now. My first question, and I would like each of you to answer. To what end were you in the temple? Why did you go in? Do you want well, to just to answer on separately a, or altogether? On a quick uh, note, yeah. I think we're supposed to answer separately, but um, I think we should just go in order of like how we introduce ourselves. Yes, separately is his meaning. Okay. Wait, <clears throat> would you mind if I went first? Okay, we'll go Aster, Ash, Arden, Adir. Well, the end of the temple that we were in was like, we went in the front, and then we were on the top. Is that what you're looking for? No, I apologize, Aster. You seem to have misunderstood my question. What was your purpose for entering the temple? Oh. Well... This guy just kind of, you know, we were in this temple back in this other city helping out these people. They had some weird, well, I guess it's not a weird animal. It's just an animal that I'm not used to seeing kind of symbol. And they were like, hey, we can't go in this area because of, like, rules. So can you guys help us out? And we were like, yeah, sure. We'll do it. Um and then, you know, we went in there, and I was feeling kind of sad, because, like, I had just seen all of my friends drown and die, but then they weren't dead. There's this weird spirit thing that did it to my vision. It was just, there was a lot going on, and then on top of that, there was this guy who helped us through the temple. And then when we got to the end of the temple, he, like, turned on us, and then he took this thing, and then... We were just, like, trying to, A, get the thing back, and then, B, we were also, we knew he was trying to do something real bad, because then, like, we scried on him, and we heard him saying he was going to, like, kill a bunch of things, and we were like, oh, no, that's bad, but then also, we were all kind of, like, really upset that he tricked us, so, like, we just kind of wanted answers, and we were, like, looking for him to get the chalice, also to get the answers, and then one thing led to another, and it's like as soon as we got there, like he started fighting us, and he sent some of his people to fight us, and it was just, I just kind of wanted to talk to him. Right, and you see he pulls out an inkwell, sets it down next to the parchment, dips his quill in, and just taps it on the paper, and everything that you said appears on the paper. But... What because, is he, I want to, because I didn't want to talk as much, I actually really went in depth about Aster's like internal struggles during that temple fight. It probably took Aster like fifteen minutes to get through his story. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, he fills up three pieces of parchment. Uh, all right. Um, well, I know most of the story. Uh, I. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Ash, please. Um, well, I mean, what he said was... It was, like, weirdly personal, but that's kind of just him. Um, yeah, we went to this temple, this temple of death. We were asked to help out because um, 
some like order that like helps out and Halendor uh, wasn't able to help them out. Like it was like a like some religious thing or whatever. And we went to the temple of this death god, right? And um, we freed the guy, the like uh, old man. We freed him from uh, these dudes who are wearing these like creepy play masks. Like, you know, like those, you know, that symbol of the, like, the laughy face and the cry face. They have, like, masks like that, except they're, like, no emotion face. Really, it's really, like, unsettling, like, but, um, where was I? Oh, yeah, okay. So we freed that guy from that guy, and then got, and then we went down the stairs, and we helped free um, all of the death gods. I forget the name of them. I'm not really like a religious type. You know what I mean? Cast so we freed all of them. Yes. Oh, you, you... Ash like looks over at Adira. Like, is that right? Um, and then keeps going. Oh, Adira uh, nods. I was muted. Sorry. Oh yeah. Cool. 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 All right. So, um, yeah. So we freed the death god, and then your your man over there. He went and he uh. He had offered us earlier some, like, peach or something that he said would help us, like, recover our strength because we had, like, used a lot of our energy saving him, and so we thought he was just being nice. And then it turns out that that, like, magical peach uh, let him just freeze us on a will, on a whim. Um, and then he stole this chalice thing that apparently kills gods or, like, poisons gods or something like that. And so, you know, we came over here to be like, hey, man, you got to return that chalice to the rightful church because I'm pretty sure you want to use it to, like, kill a bunch of things, like god things. And that's probably not good. Like, there's enough going on in the world that we don't need dead gods thrown in the mix. You know what I mean? So pretty much just that. We were just going there to be like, hey, give that back so we could give it back to the temple. Temple guys were really nice, a little creepy, you know what I mean? But overall, nice folk. And it sounds like there was a lot of inner turmoil going on over at, at the Storm Guy Temple, too. Like, there was just a lot going on, really. So, I don't really know the political... I'll just stop now. Right. Someone else can explain better. Okay. Now, from here on out, I would like as much detail as you can give me, but perhaps... The immediate question could be answered, and then if I ask you to expand on it, you can speak a little bit longer. Um, Lord Austinwald, uh, what was uh, what was your purpose for being in the temple? Well, I was with the others here, doing much the same uh, that Ash and Aster have already talked about. Um, the I think it was the Order of the Lion's Hope couldn't enter because uh, they can't commit violence or they can't enter into other temples of other religions, other faiths. Their so, laws, their order refuses to shed blood or cast spells in order to harm on consecrated ground. Yes. Um, so they needed someone outside of the order to go in. So right. they hired us and because so we were the... adventurers priest that you initially received the assistance of, he betrayed you, took yes, something... Yes, uh, Thank you. And he took something... It was a pomegranate. It was a pomegranate. And he took something from you all, and away he went. Then you all came here to retrieve that item so that you could take it back to the Temple of Kastarash. Yes. And what was this item? Um, it was a chalice. And do you know the purpose of this item? To kill gods. It's used for brewing poison, I believe. Ah. He's in the process of doing it atop the temple. That is a very... <laughs> that is a very important item, then. I can see why... It would not be good to have that in just anyone's hand. Uh... Uh, when we tell him what the item does... What is his reaction? He doesn't seem surprised. Seems like knowledge he already had. He doesn't look like he wants it for himself or anything. I mean, make an insight check. Uh, 
Where's my insight button? There it is. 24. This guy is, he acknowledges that gods exist, but they play no part in his life. Okay. Um, and by the way, just uh, for this conversation reference, if you all are lying or trying to wrap around the truth by talking a lot, please make deception checks. Please tell me that you are doing that. Gotcha. Because I know that Aster and Ash would talk that long. <laughs> 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 um, but just if you are trying to be deceitful by not telling the whole truth or by telling too much of the truth, please let me know because this guy is... He has... Uh, smart. expertise in insight and he's not even a rogue um, <laughs> he's got gun eyes that fire off whenever someone lies yep <laughs> uh, I don't think Aster would have a reason to lie to this dude because sure Adira is this answer acceptable the fact that we were in a Kastorosh temple, we met with Seldomus, who was a follower of... Ah, uh, the name escapes me. What is it? What was his religion? Dior. Dior. And his name His Dior. name is Sacerdos. Seldomus is Sacerdos. the city, I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. Uh, Sacerdos, who is a follower, one of the lead uh, men of the temple of Dior here in Seldomus. He helped us a bit, but he gave us a pomegranate because we we're all somewhat injured. And he used that during a final battle when we were helping the other clerics of Castorosh summon the chalice. He used the pomegranate to freeze us so he could take the chalice for himself. And therefore, we followed him to the city. We also had other business here, and we decided we would kill him. We killed several of the people who followed him, but we tried to spare everyone else who mm. did not follow his ways. Any of the people that you killed were in the temple, were any of them peaceful? Not trying no. to kill you or help the people trying to kill you? No, Mr. Ash? Yeah, I actually, uh, not only did we um, not kill anyone who was peaceful, we convinced a dude who wasn't, who was like trying to fight us to just like not so we actually went out of our way to make sure that we, you know, like we're, we're not mar like monsters. We didn't want to kill anybody who wasn't trying to kill us first. So, you know, we oh, had a conversation. However, he was not hostile at the moment, but everyone else, we like tried to say back down. And then they all just were like, you did. Yeah, no. You did let a few people go. It's been a while, but you did let some people go. Yeah. No, we definitely let some people. We let, we let anybody that wasn't like, we're going to kill you. We, we were like, okay, well, if you're not going to kill us, please, like, go. We've got to stop a god-killing guy. Very good, very okay. good. Because there were, like, two or three guys on the water level, right, that we didn't... Yep, you let two people go. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, did you remove anything sacred to Dior? Or his followers? No. Um, let me check my inventory, but I'm pretty sure we didn't. I tried to steal. Yeah, I, I was going to try and steal the things. The answer but to that question, then, is still no, if yeah. you didn't do it. <laughs> didn't do it. What is it? Yeah. Um... Did you know of Sacerdos' plan to use the chalice to kill the rest of the gods of the Pantheon? Did we? We did, I right? I don't think we knew for a fact that's what he was going <laughs> to do, but we had an inkling because... I knew! Cullen Bard says as he takes a big sip of his wine. <laughs> <laughs> the potential uses for such an artifact are quite limited, so I think it was a fair assumption. Yeah, we kind of made the... I think it was like, we, we were like, hey, what does that chalice do that he just took? And then the people at the Death Temple were like, it kills gods. And we said, it's probably not a good thing. Because it's not like he took it saying, like, let me keep this safe. He took it after, like, immobilizing us all. Yeah. And then took it and just ran. 
So it felt very, it was one of those things where it's like, I don't know if he like knew for sure, but it was pretty clear that something weird was going on with him and that he was probably going to use it for a bad purpose. And I'm pretty sure we told the lion's hope. Right. Well, uh, they could not have been much help. They are <laughs> not often much help. Uh, when it comes to... From what I can see, yeah, that seems about right. When it comes to religious matters, of course. They are uh, loyal friends of the House of the Dove. And... Sorry, wait, what did he just say? He called the Lion's Hope loyal friends to the House of the Dove. And we heard that from the guy back in our first city, right? The the what's-his-butt. Um, this guy. No, it was... Wait, was that this guy? Yeah, that was Julius Sextus. He was the guy you talked to in the garden. Oh, no, no, no. I'm talking about the A-team. We heard that from... Um, oh, the, the magistrate. The, yeah. 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 The House of the Dove is... It is both the office of that the ministers work out of, which is essentially like a way of referring to the executive branch of Hallandor, but it is also the soul bond of every emperor has been the dove. Okay, and it's... Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm looking at my notes. Um, was the magistrate part of the fangs, or was he part of the order of the doves? He was, he was part of the fangs, right? He was the fangs of the jackal. That's his allegiance. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And those are the people that we like, not... Well, I don't we know. know that the I don't know your, bad, right? I don't know your all's politics. I don't know. <laughs> we, we, were, we were sort of like, he helped us, and since he helped us and we kind of helped him back, it's we have like a bit of a mutual respect, I'd say. But didn't he, also... didn't he tell us that the doves are bad? He didn't tell us that the doves are bad, no. Mm, he implied he just, it. <laughs> yeah, but he didn't outright say it. Okay. He just he says didn't that know your the, politics either. <laughs> yeah, but he sort of he's his and the jackal's intentions it seems are to like push somebody with like a soul bond of like a jackal into a okay, position okay. of power because his brother was remember writing that transcript. Yeah. About how the first two emperors or leader I first ruler first emperor was a plebeian. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the first and second emperor. But it says the first and second emperor took the dove as their soul bond. So the first emperor was deposed, and the second emperor, he was part of the patrician class. He, All emperors have had dove as their soul bonds. First one included in that. All of them have had the dove. Now, I have a last question, and it's it's good that we bring up loyalty. Are any of you loyal to a nation beside Hallandor? Not that you must be loyal to Hallandor. I do not believe that any of you are from Hallandor, but do any of you owe a powerful allegiance? Are you a part of the military or any specific uh, military order that owes its allegiance to any nation? Um, no. I care... Uh, I care deeply for Ursumer. Yeah, like, I care about my country, but I'm not, like, you know... I don't, I'm not, like, a soldier or anything. I'm a legitimized bastard, so... I don't really have much... in the way of, uh you know, loyalty towards the nobles of Dasaro. Uh, I'm one of the druids of Yorn. Very well. Ben, tell me what I need to roll for that, if I need to roll anything. No, you're, you're telling the truth, and I think, I mean, you are loyal to your sister, but not in the sense that you are, like, here acting as a spy. So I don't think... Okay. I think it's fair to say that Aster is telling a a whole truth there. Okay. Um, he is sweating a little bit. Okay. Um, Adira, when you say you're loyal to Ursumer instead of Uncle, um, Sextus's eyes flash up at you and he stops writing. 
and he says, I will uh, return in just a moment. And he just sort of sticks his head out and seems to say something, and then he comes back. And he leans over the box, and he says, Lady Sinanoga. Yes? Would you like to speak to your father? Yes. Well, I don't mean to pry into the family business of my friend, but perhaps, depending on the conversation you wish to have, you might want to take those, and he points at his ears, off. But, like I said, I don't want to pry. Well, how would she take her ears off? He's talking about my earrings. Seriously, oh. do you not? <laughs> <laughs> like she's got these big dangly earrings. Do you not notice them? <laughs> They've oh. been on my ears the entire time. The I'm entire surprised time. you have not been mesmerized by them. They're you know, gorgeous. They dangle now that you really mentioned it. No. Uh, yeah, I haven't noticed those before. <laughs> there is the matter of payment. I apologize if it is steep, but we may set up a uh, plan to be paid back over a few years, if it is what is required. And I am sure that you do not agree, but... The Crown of Hallandor will be requiring 600 gold for this incident. That is... I wish we had all that gold. We won back. <laughs> I don't have 600 gold. I could chip in her. I could. I have zero gold. <laughs> An installment plan might be the matter, of course. Could currently. I give you half of it up front? As much as you would like to give me. And then there is a knock on the door. It is. Hold on. He's supposed to. I. I. Uncle is. Even though they are not Spain, it's Spanish accents. It is Santa Nica. Hi, Santa Nica. So that is your dad. You hear your dad's voice, Adira. Um, oh shit! Adira's eyes like start to get misty. Do you do anything? No, she doesn't take off the earrings. Okay, come in. <laughs> How weird is it that your dad is here right now? The door swings open. And he rushes in. And he walks right here and he says, Excuse me. And he just kind of brusquely walks through you, Ash. Oh. Um, and he is going to give Adira... He's going to give you a hug. He just steps over my head. Basically. You notice he is uh, an inch and a half shorter than Adira. Yeah. Um, but well, she's he, a giant. But he is <laughs> as broad as Adira. <laughs> um, and you notice, like, his robes are really, really nice. Um, they're like this sort of, uh, this red, but they have these big gold polka dots that have sort of, like, frills around the the dot. Um, and he wears a few chains with large, you know, rubies inlaid in the center. Uh, but he gives Adira a hug, and when he does, you see that he is uh, very, very muscular. For an ambassador. Uh, Julius Sextus is not muscular. And they seem to have comparable jobs. Uh, but he is giving Adira a big hug. Adira hugs him back. My friend is whispering in Adira's ear, Your dad is jacked. <laughs> Wait, is this Adira's dad? <laughs> uh, Adira doesn't say anything. She just hugs her dad. He pulls back. Are you alright, my Lotus? I'm okay, Papa. Then he hugs you again. Yeah, dear, just hugs him back again. Uh, you notice he kind of looks at your earrings and he frowns. But then his face softens again as he passes back and he turns and he says, Julius, what is the meaning of this? I what what? Papa, this is this is okay. I I killed the priest here. Technically, it's it's a long story, but it's it's all right. 
A priest. Technically, none of us killed the priest. Technically, some like face spirited. I'm not sure that if that lowers true. the gold amount, honey. That's, yeah. <laughs> Technically, we're all innocent. But he was also summoned by you, Esther, and <laughs> your intention was to kill him, so. Ah, um. 519 <laughs> gold, then. Uh, you notice you, your father, like, pulls back in his anger and turns back to you and says, Priest of what god? Dior. Oh, who cares? Uh, <laughs> 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 Alright, Sextus, are you going to try my daughter for some crime of killing a fake god's priest? Ugh. Sextus just kind of <laughs> looks at him and says, I apologize. <laughs> I, I must follow the laws of my empire. And he kind of smiles, and uh, you all can make an insight check if you want. Uh, yeah, I do. These yeah, baby. about these guys is oh. deal. Are they secret Seven. lovers? No, uh, they were <laughs> they were chums at school. They went to a. Nah. a That's my dad. They went to a school together. <laughs> um, and they're Still secret lovers. About the same age. Uh, I don't see a, I don't see a mom anywhere, Adira. <laughs> <They're>... <laughs> oh no, your mom's Julia Sextus. Uh... <laughs> My 14 insight makes me think they were secret lovers. Um, but <laughs> at school, uh, no, still. <laughs> you do notice though that they uh, they seem to have a relationship that shows that they were probably friends when they were much younger. Uh, but Adira's dad looks way younger than Julia Sextus. Julia Sextus looks like. All of his 48 years. Whereas Santanika Sinanoga, he looks like, man, he's not a day over 34. So she's got a dilf for a, for a poppy. I mean, yeah, he's oh got a big God. mustache. He's got long hair that he seems to take care of really well. Uh, I mean, Aster's already said that he's attracted, so. Don't fuck my dad, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to isolate that and send it to your dad. I mean... <laughs> 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 the fear in Emmy's voice when she said, <laughs> My dad would never understand. <laughs> that was so funny. Okay, um, so they, they, they're old friends. They're all butt buddies. Going through the five stages of grief. So, Adira. I'm so yes? I'm sorry. Um Who are your who are your friends? I, I have not uh introduced myself. I am Santanika Sinanor. Ash jumps up and like puts his hand hand out and starts like shaking it vigorously. Yeah. Hi, my name's Ash. He... She's like my favorite person. <laughs> He shakes your hand and he smiles at you and says, Mine too. And uh, when he has grabbed your hand, Ash, um, this dude's got an iron grip. I can see where she gets all her strength from because this is like, you're strong, dude. Like, that's really cool. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> I did not mean to. I can't differentiate Spain and Italy. <laughs> <laughs> These dudes just sound the same. <laughs> I'm trying to sound like Inigo Montoya. Hello! My name is <laughs> Sanigo Sinanoga. I love my daughter. <laughs> but she makes me sad. Prepare to die! Um, uh, mine too. And uh, I apologize. I did not mean to hurt your hand. Oh, you didn't. It's just like, good for you. I thank you. <laughs> and uh, you too. Uh, Aster just sheepishly peeks out from behind Adira, still with this bear rug covering his entire body, and reaches out a paw. This is completely normal. <laughs> I would just like to say this is a very normal thing for him. His name is Aster. <laughs> yes, my name is Aster, and I reach my hand out. But, like, <laughs> Aster reaches it out. <laughs> For like, you know how uh, in like old movies, people the man kisses the woman's hand. Yeah, oh that's how he reaches his hand out. Yeah, and <laughs> se seemingly without a second thought, he reaches down and kisses your hand. 
Uh, <laughs> he looks at you, Adira, and kind of out of the side of his mouth says, That seems like something Harshal would do. Uh, you're, is he okay? Are they okay? Uh, yes. Um, Praveen has enlisted in the army of the Sultan to fight the Blood Hand. I see. Uh, he was always a much better fighter than... Than me? Yes. <laughs> uh, well, than me too. I don't know about that. Yeah, I'm ask, sure that ask. if you ever choose to return, the Sultan would be happy to have you. Aster just says, I don't think anyone's a better fighter than you, Adira. Uh, thank you, uh, but my friend, Arden. Yes, Arden. Uh, I'm Arden, and I, I do a little bow. Um, your daughter is the strongest individual I've ever met, both in physicality and character. <laughs> you fucking piss ass! <laughs> 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 I whisper that under his breath. I'm loving this. <laughs> Why is everyone trying to kiss up to my dad? <laughs> look, your three <laughs> look at him. Your three friends are trying to trying. bone your dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I'm not trying to kiss up to your dad. I'm just trying to kiss your dad. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I just want to be this dude's friend. <laughs> You're Ash's favorite person. Of course he wants to be friends with your dad. Well, now that makes sense, but he, but after when he kiss my dad is very weird. He, uh... <laughs> I want to be your dad's new, uh, new Julia Sextus. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, well, uh, Arthur, pleasure to meet you. Uh, and he looks down at Montoya and he says, Are you good with that? I would like to think so, yes. He's fantastic. He's going to sell himself short. Don't let it. Well, uh, it is a pleasure to meet you. I'm glad that... Well, from the sounds of it, Adira is keeping the three of you safe, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> you're not wrong. You're, you're alive, certainly. That's... She brought me back from the dead... And they ask her, just starts counting on his fingers how many times he's done it. <laughs> just really just once. I've healed you many times, though. Well, that's... Uh... Well, I think I've been dead, like, four times. You picked me up. That's very... Like, I've been making saving throws a lot. Well, that's very good. Um, now, uh, Adira, I should tell you, your brothers are... They're well. Uh, Kieran has even begun to learn magic. <laughs> uh, he, what does he like best? Does he like healing, or does he more... No, uh, he has set three of your mother's dresses on fire. <laughs> oh, wait, does he need some help with that? Because I can... <laughs> I can help hone that in. Yes, um... <laughs> I'm sure Does you could. need help setting the uh, mom's dresses on fire? <laughs> sir, uh, Ash. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what am I doing? He just wants to, uh, he just wants to live up to your mother's reputation and the example that his big sister set. You're right. I don't use a lot of fire though and I don't think I ever set mother's dresses on fire on purpose at least no no uh, <clears throat> could I speak to you in private dear of course and he walks past you ash to sort of go back to sort of near the window mm -hmm. Adira follows he takes one of your hands and two of his hands, and he says, Adira, please, come home. I know that you do not want to be married, and that, that is fine. I, I shouldn't have tried to push you into it, but... You are 
so much braver and smarter than I am. You're so much stronger willed than your mother. You could have a very good life in Angkor. Praveen is a severe young man. Harshal is too happy-go-lucky. Kiran could manage the mine, I think. But he is just—he is just a boy. If something were to happen to me and your mother, there would need to be someone to guide him. I know that. I know that you have a lot of empathy. And that you feel for. He looks at your earrings. Those who go against the will of the Sultan. I do not want them to be killed. I want them to be converted. Adira, you could come back. You could be a success story. You could worship the many below one again. What, like you did as what, a girl. Be a success story for what? Giving up on what I actually believe in? Please, I I do not wish to argue. I have not seen you in so long. But, but I, that's what you're asking of me to do, is to give up what I believe in. Atira, for you. For for the family again. Atira, I love my brothers dearly, but I cannot do that for you. And do you not love me? Of course I love you. And I love you. And I cannot but... imagine, I cannot imagine paradise with my wife, my three sons, and no daughter, Adira. That is not paradise for me. And that is what you are asking me to accept. You are asking me to give up on you. I... I have other things I need to do right now. <clears throat> I could... I'm not the same as I was when I left, but I'm not that much different, but I'll give it more thought. I know Kira needs somebody to help him, and I know Pavrin is, he'll never, <laughs> he would never do as someone in your position, or Harshal, that, that, that's kind of a joke to think about him, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That was mean of me to say of him, but whatever. I, I'll think about it. Very well. I hope that you and your friends are safe. You know I'll keep them safe, and they will keep me safe too. You've seen how much they want to impress you. Yes, um, please tell uh, that one any kind of points that asked her. <laughs> that I am happily married. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and he gives you a hug. Adira hugs him back. And he says, I love you, Lotus. I love you, Papa. And he walks, and he's kind of uh, going fast so that you all don't really get a look at him. And he's like, I, it's good to meet you all. <laughs> and he stops. Always good to have a side piece. And he, <laughs> <laughs> he uh, claps his shoulder, his hand down on Sextus's shoulder, and leans down and whispers something. And then he walks out of the room. He's whispering it, sweet nothing. That's what Aster thinks. Sweet, sweet nothing. <laughs> Stop trying to fuck my dad. <laughs> uh, well. <laughs> Ah, now I am very hot and sweaty because I am very emotional about that. Woo! Well, um, um... Did we hear that at all? Like, I know that they were off to the side. But I, like... Yeah, so Aster did not with that seven perception. If Arden and Ash want to make a perception check, they can. Yeah. Ash did oh. not? <laughs> um, Arden got that they kind of argued and then kind of reached a lull point but that the argument was hot enough that Santanica decided it was better to just kind of try to leave while there was a happy meeting. 
Um, Can I roll an insight, even though I didn't hear it, to see if it was good or bad? I think with a like, seven... I could tell if it was good or bad? I think with a seven, you couldn't pick up on enough of the nuances to pick it what they mean. All right, Astro thinks it went great. Okay. Um, and Sextus... <laughs> Write something down after Santanica leaves and looks up at each of you and says, Ah, uh, well, I have re. I have looked at the numbers again. And, uh. Hallandor will actually be paying you all 50 gold for ridding us of Sacerdos. Whoa, what? So, and he reaches into his pouch and just puts. takes out five platinum and puts them on the table and says, uh, you are free to go. There is a carriage that is able to take you uh, back to the lower districts if you would like. Thank you all. He leaves. Yeah, great. Thank, thank you. Thank yeah. you. And we will be having our first five minute break. Nice. Oh, oh boy. Um, so um, if it wasn't clear, Adira's dad yeah. paid your bill. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. Thanks, Daddy. Yes. Thanks, Daddy. Ew. Connor. I swear to God. <laughs> Connor, if you do, Connor, not my sugar, Dad. Connor, if you do not behave, I will stop introducing Dilfs. <laughs> I think the big issue is you keep introducing too many Dilfs. I know. Yeah. Well, listen. If I'm gonna have an older man, he's probably gonna be a Dilf. <laughs> It's very difficult for me to be like, here's an important character. He just looks fine. Nah, he looks fine. <laughs> also, I'm just trying to hint at something that you all don't, no one but Emmy knows. And you all took it as, oh, this dude's handsome. <laughs> and then I ran with it. Because you know what? He is handsome. He's a handsome fella. Is he like a fighter? I'm, who knows? Um, so I'll explain. Uh, in Uncle, there are, there's like a caste system, and Adira and her family, their caste system is sort of like a bunch of people who are trained from birth, and like marriages are typically arranged to make sure that you have a very strong family. <gasps> Ew. Uh, that's so not, it's like a dead fighters. That's not oh, what like, I was actually indicating, but yeah, that's a good oh, point. Oh, okay. But that <laughs> is part of the caste system. Also, uh, her mom is much taller than her dad. <laughs> For, that's for another particular reason. Mm, I, so I don't know exactly what he meant, what he was specifically talking about. I mean, do you want me to? I feel like he's half. I feel like he's a half elf because he looks super young. Oh yeah, he's he's half he's half dwarf. I mentioned this before. Oh, yeah. But there's like a quarter dwarf. Yeah. Yeah. That's why his mustache that is great. Yeah. So yeah, the deer is just. I didn't know dwarves had longer lifespans. Oh yeah, yeah they, they have do. to be like three hundred. Oh, that's okay. When he said um, looks a lot younger, I was like, is he like part elf? Because I know elf. I knew elves had extended lifespans, and that now, were like I, a long time. So Uncle has like a lot to do with like there are a lot of dwarves in Uncle okay. because it's a big mining mm. oh, like okay. Okay, okay, city okay. and like city state sort of thing. So I thought, uh, I want to do human variant, so why not, like, the mm. idea is that she is half dwarf, so I put a lot more into, like, constitution and, like, Okay. that's yeah. why she's also kind of, like, a lot of dwarves are often paladins or clerics. I'll be right back. So uh, right um, just so that we don't do this on stream, um, and, like, we don't take up time for that, uh, would you guys be cool? I think we should give one of the platinums to Blind Boy. I can't remember his name. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, too. that's a good idea. I forget Great. his name, but I love that guy. I'm down with that. Um, I also I'm going to get a new chess set. Yeah. I almost <laughs> was like, I didn't take anything, but I drew on his table. Does that count? <laughs> I mean, Ben kind of said it when he was talking about how, like, if you're trying to deceive him, like, deceive so uh, Sextus, like. Aster and Ash would talk for forever, no matter what. Yeah. yeah. They, they, if, if they were trying to be sneaky, I think they wouldn't talk for as long. But... Yeah. I think, yeah, I think with Ash, there was a moment where I was like, do I want Ash to have, like, a don't talk to cops 
mentality, like super <laughs> short <laughs> to the point answers, and I was like, ah, feels like he'd just ramble. Yeah. I think he would try to have that mentality and then completely fail. Also, if you can tell, her brothers are like you guys. Oh. <laughs> she is, like, Pavrine is very good at, like, he's a very good swordsman, because his name means skilled, so it was Arden. And then Harshal, which means happiness. <laughs> Happy-go-lucky, and it's a joke of an idea for an heir. <laughs> Aster. And then Kieran, of course, set a ton of things on fire. <laughs> that, that is hilarious. I love it. Cause I was, cause like originally she did have a bunch of siblings, but I was never entirely sure about the order. But then when I was like, oh, Adir is the older sister here, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I sort of leaned into that. I was fully ready for us to go to Uncall to help you with your family stuff. I was like fully ready to just go in all in on it and be like, yep, we're going to Uncall. Yep. Well, thank you. Um, Aster would go anywhere with that man. <laughs> and then you would see him with his very beautiful and nice wife, who's my uh, mother. <laughs> Aster would still want to fuck. <laughs> yeah, Deer's gonna have a conversation with you. I'm kidding. <laughs> she wouldn't. Hey, Aster's gonna say, "Wait, do you do you know do you know a gay man down at all call? You hook me up." <laughs> Adira would probably be like, I mean, I probably know one or two, but they're technically married. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> Damn. Which would oh. only make him think that your dad was yeah. gay even more. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking about? <laughs> Who's married? Oh my gosh. Um, Aster was just, the whole time you were talking to your dad, if you ever looked over, he was just giving you thumbs up because he thought everything was going great. With that seven perception, it seemed like everything was going fine. <laughs> Best family dynamic there's ever yeah. been. When he asked me, if, when he asked, do you guys have any affiliations with any other country? I was like, my sister is the leader of a country. <laughs> I don't know what. She's the say. leader of a faction in a country. It's the same deal. Uh, very much not same deal. <laughs> <laughs> same, same, but different. <clears throat> Because um, we're different, but we're the same. We're the same. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how to answer this question. But I, I like runners. <laughs> I like Dr. Martins. And I like Zach's Dr. Martins. <laughs> I'm nice, man. Cause we're, and what we all like footwear, because we're different, but we're the same. Hi. Please watch anything by Auntie Donna. <laughs> <laughs> Emmy and I love Auntie Donna. <laughs> That's just a that's just a com that's just a plug for a Australian absurdist sketch comedy group. <laughs> Alright. I wouldn't expect anything less. Is everybody ready to get back into it? Hell yeah. Yeah. Alright. And so you all have uh, just basically gotten your tab paid for because Adira was not as mean to her dad as she could have been. Yeah, that was been. a lot sweeter than I thought it was gonna go. I thought it was gonna be a lot more tense on either side, but I'm glad it wasn't. I, I, he hadn't seen you in like a year. Um, so, you all are now alone. You you don't have any obligation to stay. Um, Adir is still standing where she and her father had talked, and she's just sort of like... She just obviously looks a little shaken up. Okay, can I notice that? Yeah, you can notice that. Yeah. Adir, are you okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk on over to her. I'm not gonna just shout that across the room. <laughs> You okay? Um, That's great that you got to see your dad again, huh? It seems like it had been a while. Yeah, it was a, uh, it was good. Um, Adira's gonna, like, kneel down and hug Ash. And I'll, I'll give her a big old hug. Astra's gonna waddle over with the big bear rug on and join in the hug. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dear. Yeah, of course, Adira will hug <laughs> Aster too. Ash is, gonna, Ash is gonna look over at Arden. And like, okay. Arden. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, that seemed tense. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm fine. I that just brought up a lot of emotions I haven't felt in a long time. Sorry. 
No, you don't, you don't need to apologize. Never um. be sorry for feeling your feelings. Thanks. Said <laughs> 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 so the guy trying to fuck your dad. <laughs> I, I, Aster, she, she takes Aster, she, like, reaches out for Aster's hand. I give it to her. Uh, she kisses it on the, she also kisses his <laughs> hand, <laughs> like, the greeting, and she says, my father is happily married. Please do not fuck him. Please don't even try. That's actually very gross to me. Can you not, can you please try that? I can try. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's really all I can ask of you, so thank you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. If you Ash don't want briefly me to, considers, <laughs> Ash briefly considers um, setting Aster's robe on fire. <laughs> I he, thinks better of it. <laughs> he thinks better of it. He considers it. Uh, <laughs> well, you all are very young, so I assume that you will be leaving here and going to one of the uh, very, very nice inns that are in this district. While you have clearance to be here, I myself, uh, I'm just happy to have a room to myself. And he gets into one of the beds. I think that we're all good to go. Are you? Are you sure you want to? I guess it is kind of a nice oh, dig. Yes. Yeah. Um, if I go back to the temple right now, <laughs> uh, they will tell me I have work to do. Whereas if I go back in a day or two, uh, all the work is done and there is wine and chess waiting for me. So, I believe I will be kept prisoner for another three days at least. So you're like my role model. I oh, I wouldn't want to be a, I wouldn't want me as your role model. I am currently an enemy of the state, forbidden from going back and helping my friends. Ash, you Wait, also what? <laughs> <laughs> Is this related to what just happened, or is this like a whole other thing? No, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I was about to say something not very priest-like. Uh, I'm messing with you. Uh, oh, yeah, Ash, don't you also have, I don't know, that's a cool mentor who also has a phoenix? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, you can have more than one, right? Like, I mean, yeah, but that... The, a dear, like, points over to... I forget what his name is. Uh, Columbard. Columbard and says, It just seems, I don't know, a little... off-brand. <laughs> no, fair, but... Just like like a moral... Like right. a moral mentor. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, Alright, fine. I... <laughs> he has rolled over and has the blanket over him. We this should year. probably go tell Bruna and Tove that we aren't in prison. Oh yeah, they did see that. Didn't they? they did see us getting hauled away. Yes. Uh, Whatever happened to the think... chalice? One of you has it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's me. Yeah. 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 I'm so sorry. You who, I don't know, made that entire sheet of our, like, all the stuff we have, <laughs> don't I, remember. I, uh, forgot what, to open it. it was Actually, I the, forgot that I had that. It was at the end of the last session. I'm pretty sure I did grab it at the end of that fight. Yeah, you grabbed it as the floor was falling down. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I have it. <laughs> Let me, let me open that up. Um, do you think they'll notice if I take this rug? Probably. <laughs> you Julia? Really Alrighty. And... <laughs> you around? What's going on? I, I, is Julius near? Nope. I'm going to peek my head out the door. Nope. He wants to try to steal that damn rug. Nope, just an Imperial oh, Guard at the end of the corridor who looks over at you and gives like an awkward kind of half nod and then goes back to keep and watch so that's like i can have it okay cool <laughs> he doesn't say that that's what he thinks he's like oh he knew what i was asking i, I don't think you should take that i'm just gonna wear it out <laughs> <laughs> you know what actually fair enough let's see what happens yeah <laughs> was there any wine left there was i'm just gonna take the bottle all right uh, pretty mean to your old friend, but okay. 
<laughs> I'll, I'll pour him out a glass All right, and leave you. it on the bedside. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, should I tell him about what I drew on his table? I, like, whisper to you. What is he drawing on his table? Oh, he's sleeping. Let's not wake him up. What did you he won't notice it's there. It's fine. Oh, come on now. That's that's just rude. And I'm, I'm going to start heading out the, the door. It livens the place up a bit. What did what did you draw? The, the A team symbol. Well, the symbol that Aster made for the A team. Alrighty. You made a symbol for us. Yeah, I remember I sent it in the... Oh. No, no, no. In a character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, I know. As you all are having this conversation, the Imperial Guard leads you back down the sort of service entrance and out of the second tower. And he's just wearing the bear skin. Yep. Okay. Cool. And you all are open to the large open areas that the patricians get to experience. Um... As you're walking, before you get to this map, you start to notice how they are, like, just these massive fucking estates. Like, just, like, country mansions built into this city with their own large territory. Um, are they larger than what uh, Arden and I are used to? No, they're, they're probably smaller than both of your own personal family holdings, but you, okay. your all's family is, like lived in a single unit that was, like, next to a town that, like, supported where you lived. <laughs> uh, this is, like, this has to fit in a city. It is ridiculous mm -hmm. that these people have this much room for, like, their own family in the city. Um, oh, okay. And as you are walking, uh, one thing I think really catches your eye, Master. You walk past a building that seems to be about three stories high, same proscenium, same columns outside, but uh, what's more interesting is past the gate that does have a symbol on the middle of the gate, uh, you can see there are beautifully kept gardens with all different types of plants. Um, oh, after runs in. Well, the gate is closed, Oh, uh, but you can run up to the gate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so the gate has this large circle in the middle. Um, it's bronze. Um, and you see that the symbol is a mushroom. And on the mushroom cap, uh, there is a open eye. It's like a little heraldry symbol of some sort. But you gaze in and you see that it's just this beautiful garden. It seems to be very symmetrical. It's, it seems to be beautifully looked after. Um, and you can see what looks kind of weird is instead of stones, which you've noticed are sort of how Hallandor frames pieces of the garden, every garden that you've seen in Hallandor, it has like stones li lay in a path around patches of grass that have trees and shrubs and flowers inside. Um, instead, it looks like they have cultivated mushrooms that go around these different parts of the uh, garden. Circles of mushrooms, squares of mushrooms, hexagons of mushrooms, uh, purposefully grown despite the difficulty. Uh, are they like, are, do they seem to be like fairy circles? Uh, there are no fairy circles in Yorn. What would that mean to Aster, you think? <clears throat> I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I know what my. It, does it relate to my druid, my my druid class? Um, like my druid circle. Not being a druid of Yorn, I don't think. What 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 what's your circle again? <laughs> I'm the I'm the circle of dreams, which is, which I know you said you don't have, like the Fey aren't in this world. Well, no, the the but that's what the Fey specifically are. It's just a different type than regular Dungeons and Dragons. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry. How about you make, uh, make a wisdom check? Just general wisdom. Add your proficiency. General wisdom with my proficiency. So it's a plus... What's our proficiency for? So it's going to be this plus four. 22. Okay. Um, yeah, you've heard of a fairy circle. 
Seems like the circle ones might be. Could be. Can I... Does it look like there's a way to... Um, start... Yes. Um, can you do the thing that you're not good at? And I do air quotes around not. Yeah, yes. As you all are saying um, that, you see a gardener <clears throat> begin to walk into view. Uh, oh, she, uh, she is a halfling woman. Uh, she is dressed in a beautiful uh, white dress, and she has a basket in one hand and a watering can in the other. Watering can is uh, painted blue. Um, ex uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Miss. Oh, um, yes. Um, would you mind letting letting me in to just just take a look around? Um, oh. Um, the, the pattern of these mushrooms. Sorry, things. yes, I, I would mind. Oh, thank you. Uh, wait, did she say she would mind or she wouldn't I mind? would mind. Oh. Um, That's a no, Aster. Is there, is there anything I can do to change your mind? Uh, and I'll, like, make a flower and, like, make n notice my attire. I don't know if that'll help. I can't help but notice the... Um, the very specifically placed positionings of your beautiful uh, greenery in here. Um. I'm, yes, I've I've planned it out. We have a lot of these back home. We we have a lot of these back home where I'm from. Oh, well, then good. You don't need to come in and see it then. Uh, ma'am. Yes. I'm very sorry. He's extremely uh, curious about everything. Do you mind just telling us where you got those? So perhaps he could, I don't know, we could buy him his own. I grow them. I, I have a few devices, a few pieces of metal that I can put over parts of the garden. And then with a bit of magic and a bit of care, I make the area that these are going to grow different. Um, trees that need to grow in a tropical climate, I make warm. Uh, I change the the size of the raindrops that are going to be hitting them. That sort of thing. Um, is it the mushrooms that interest you? Um, yes, uh, but also the implications that they can have. The the application of them in some type of brew, yes? Uh, in a sense. Then if it will let me get back to work, and she reaches down and she pulls up just five of them that are in a row, and she walks over to you. Here you go. Oh, no. And she um, just pushes them through, she pushes her hand through the ring of the gate, and you all notice she's a very pretty halfling woman. Uh, like 30 at the most. A um, lot of freckles, black hair, and a braid over one shoulder. Um, whenever I reach out to touch the, like, to grab the mushrooms, I want to, like, um, brush her hand with my hand. Um, is, does there seem to be, like, an illusion over top of it at all? No. And... Sorry, you have an interest in gardening? Gardening? He's obsessed uh, with it, yeah. He's constantly making flowers everywhere we oh, go. Oh, well, I could send you some seed packets. Can I have your name? Oh, um, my name is uh, Aster Snowborn. Okay. Um, um, and Aster, you forget everything you know about fairies for the next hour. Very good. I'll send you something. Then she turns around. Blades back. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Ben, I, I, I didn't think Ash was, like, attracted to it, but it was just taking so long that I probably would just wander over. Does he recognize anything? Uh, yeah, you've seen some circles like that back in Oil Nicom. <laughs> cool. Do, does he know anything about that? Nah, or... probably not. <laughs> cool. No, fair enough. Fair enough. That symbol that was on the gate. Uh, yeah. Um, I can make, I can let you all make a, whoever feels like they know the most about Hallandor can make a history check. Oh, Hallandor, never mind. Okay. Mushrooms with an eye. There's fairy circles in there. 
on my stream. Uh, I might know probably the most about Hallandor. Okay, uh, yeah, make a history check. Not the one you <laughs> Okay, um, this is... Uh, you are looking at the estate of one of the richest patrician families. Uh, the Carboculus. Carboculus um, family. And this is the symbol that they have taken because uh, the mushrooms that Aster has are Procini mushrooms. Uh, this is called the Procini Palace. Uh, your father has had some business with them. That's going to be how you know this much. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. <laughs> and uh, basically, they uh, the majority of uh, apothecaries in Hallandor uh, either report directly to this family or get their supplies and have to pay dues to this family. What was the family's name again? Uh, Carboculus. I'll put that okay, on Okay, cool. So it's not the it's not the girl who we took in the lion's so. <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to kind of detail that to everybody else as we're walking away. So I and I gained a handful of what kind of mushrooms? Procini. Um would that aside from Hallandor history does that symbol have anything to do with the Fae? No. Okay. You wouldn't know either, would you? Yeah. Well, not for an hour at least. <laughs> I was gonna ask. The what? I was gonna ask it before the woman showed up, but then she showed up and I started talking to her. Damn it! I should just snuck in. Okay. This is why I don't ask for things. Um, but you all basically make it to the gate of the. From this nice district to the regular city, would you like to stay in a nice inn here, or would you like to go further and go to just a regular inn? I don't know if we have the money for a nice inn. We we don't. <laughs> I have thirty one <laughs> platinum on me, so why we might... do you? <laughs> yeah, Adira. Oh, yeah, like. Although, <laughs> when... Adira almost has five hundred gold <laughs> and like thirty one platinum. Damn, Adira. Some people bought scimitars of speed, yep. and some did. Yeah. Um, and so some bought plate mail. What would you like to do? Would you like to go into the regular city, knowing that you might not be able to come back in, or would you like to stop at an inn, go to a library, talk to some oh. people, go to something? I would definitely want to stay here, then, if we might not be able to come back in. Yeah, I agree yeah. with that. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. I'd be fine with that. Then you all make your way instead to an inn. Make my way. Make my way to an inn. Um, and you eventually find that one of the nicer inns that is perhaps a little bit more modestly priced is called the Tuppence Inn. It is a joke. Uh, <laughs> the name is a joke. Uh, but you all make your way there. And uh, you are free. You have control of your token. So you may enter the inn if you like. <laughs> Let's get <Yeah>. blitzed! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Actually, has our group ever gotten, like, drunk together? You have not. No. Should we just roleplay us getting fucking hammered? Have fun. Yeah. Oh, that's right, you don't drink. The okay. beer does not drink, no. You can always play drinking games with water, Adira. I know that's a really cool game. Um... You put mugs on two ends of a table, and then you throw, like, a tiny pebble. You, like, place the mugs in a triangle. They're about ten mugs. Aye, aye, yeah, what'll it be? What'll it be for you? It's called, it's called Mead Pebble. Oh, hey, no Mead, pe no mead Pebble in here. There's <laughs> <laughs> a classy establishment. No Mead Pebble. Uh, what'll it be? Um, can I just have a, like, a whiskey? Yeah, all right. <laughs> One whiskey. You got a preference, a location? Not really, no. Well, no. All right. <laughs> he sets a whiskey preference. down. Does he mean, like, do you want it, like, 
on your head. No, that, that's not what I mean, Master. Have you ever been to a bar? No, not really. Oh. But I heard oh they have like, do you have little drinks with like the little, the little parchment umbrellas in them? What? It is, I, I will say, and I look over at Arden, it is customary for the person who's never been to a bar before to pay the tab for uh, the friends that take them to the bar for the first time. Yeah, that is that is absolutely a thing, especially here in Hallandor. Especially here in Hallandor, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I mean, I guess if that's a custom. <laughs> Sorry, and what, what kind of drink did you say that you wanted? Just, uh, just something, I've heard of these cute tasty drinks that have like a cute little parchment umbrella that you stick in. Oh, uh, yeah. One of our parasol drinks. I'll get you that right away. Yeah. Um, I just like put five platinum down on the counter. Is this going to be enough? Uh, for what you've got here, yeah, it should be enough. Cool. How, how many rounds will that cover? Uh, of what you all have got, uh... Uh, ten. Right. Pardon? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just take, like, some kind of a local brew. What do you have? Uh, what do you recommend, really? I'm gonna sneak back over to Adira. Well, most of what people in Hallandor drink is wine. Uh, so wine is what's mostly local. Um, do have some good mead from Yorn. Uh, I have a stout from Darcero. Uh, I've got a little bit of uh, Zeshin brandy. That's pretty good. I'll I'll go with the brandy. I think uh, you got it. Could I also have a cup of milk? Uh no, I don't have milk here. Why would I have milk? I don't know, Adira. They don't have milk. What else do you want? I yeah, I went back to ask Adira. I know you don't drink, but like, what do you want? What do you want? To, do you want something to eat or something? Uh, yeah, food would always be good. Oh, you got a, you got a teetotaler over there. Yep. Yeah. I'm sorry, what did he say? Teetotaler. Teetotaler. Oh. Yeah, don't drink. Got you. Okay. <laughs> it, it almost sounded like he was being offensive. <laughs> I, I thought the exact same thing. I was, I was about to be like, excuse me. Oh, okay. I don't know what it sounded like I said, but I didn't say it. Uh, well, no, I heard you say The word itself has, but I have like... No idea what that was. <laughs> kind of sounds like a slur. Yeah. Well, for like a fantasy race. <laughs> Oi, is that a teetotaler? <laughs> is that Gillian Jacobs? Get out of here! <laughs> um, that's just a little fact that I know about Gillian Jacobs. Um, Does she not drink? Teetotaler. Um, <laughs> I've got uh, some cordial. Sle it's that? lemons, we keep it cold. Oh, it's like yeah. a lemon water with a bunch of sugar and a little bit of cream in it. So I guess not milk, but I got cream. Can I have one of those with like some alcohol in it? Yeah, sure. And he gets a plain cordial that he puts a little like iron band around, and then he gets one with uh, he puts a little bit of vodka in it. Yornish vodka. Hey. All right then. That's fine. I can. That's I'll. Right. I'll keep those coming until the money runs out. How about that? Sounds good. And uh, Sounds some like food. And you all have any dietary restrictions? Uh, it, it, you can just make a little spicy for me, please. All right. That's not a restriction. That's not what I asked. So any dietary restrictions? Wait. No. Am I a vegetarian? I don't know. Are you? <laughs> I don't remember if I, <laughs> I said I was a vegetarian back at the beginning, but I just okay. ate meat back in the other place. I will be very honest. I only remember that uh, who specifically is a vegan, but that's only because he talks about it every fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I can I see people you. assuming that Aster is a vegetarian, and then him just looking at them and being like, what, are bears vegetarian? Yeah. You're from you're from yeah. Viking land. I feel like you don't you don't need to be a vegetarian just because you're a uh, druid. No, but I gotta watch my life figure. <laughs> I'm about to punch you through the scrape. <laughs> <laughs> gotta 
remain a twink for as long as possible. Uh, okay, so he just brings you all meats. <laughs> uh, no, he brings out what is essentially uh, he brings out what is strangely enough like a um, egg noodle soup, like from Shu Han. Uh, and then with it, he has a plate of roasted chicken, and you notice that one of them has red pepper flakes. He sets that Thank down. you. Uh, and he goes back, and um, not long after you all have sat down, uh, you begin to hear something almost knocking at the door, but it's a little bit lower than it should be for a person. I guess not for Ash. For Ash, it just seems like a normal person knocking, but it sounds like a very weird knock. Like, it sounds like someone's knocking with something. Ash, or Aster just yells, Come in! Uh, the, the knocking goes faster for a few seconds, but then it just goes back to, Knock. 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 I'll walk over. Yeah, but I feel like he's, he might be. How long have we been here? Because I was thinking Aster's probably throwing these lemonade things back because they probably taste real good. Yeah, they taste pretty good. Um, I think you've only been you've only you're on like your second one. You're like halfway through the second one. All right, and you open a door, the door, and you see a rooster. Oh, ah! hi there, little guy. He wants to come in. Well, come, come on then. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna cast speak with animal. Yeah, hi. I'm uh, Alan. Yeah, <laughs> this is exactly what I was hoping for. Hey, uh, hi, Alan. Uh, it's good to meet you. Um, uh, would you possibly be able to uh, secure me some of that uh, food and uh, beer? Yeah. Oh, she'll be yeah. right. Thanks. I, I'll give him. Like half of my plate. <laughs> can we all hear him, or can only Aster hear this? Only, <laughs> only Aster. Okay. Unfortunately. Uh, guys, this this is this is Alan. Uh, Hi, I'm Alan from really earlier. <laughs> from earlier. Uh, hi, Alan. Hey, I'm Alan. I'm Adira. Hi. I'm I'm Ash. Uh, Adira's gonna lean over to Art and say, "This isn't really out to the ordinary." No, no, um, this is to be expected. Yeah. Alan, it's... do you do you mind if I pick you up and put you on the table? Um, so, yeah, I don't really mind, but uh, if you're going to pick me up and put me on the table, uh, could I uh, have a beer? Oh, yeah, I was just saying so it would be easier for you to get to. Oh, it. yeah, you ripper, yeah. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Consent and all. And he gets up on the table. Ash, Ash just kind of looks over at the chicken, at the rooster on the table, and then he looks back at Adira, and he's like, So Adira, what was, what was the whole thing with the earrings <laughs> that, um, that that Julius guy was talking about? Uh, so my father's faith, my family's faith, is a little different from mine. Uh, Wait, really? Yes, uh, they don't really like quotient extremism. Well, particularly, it, remind me again, Ben. Like, they also are they also Christian or are they no. like do not they oh, wait they have a different religion. yes so right. it is there's just two the, hmm? so there are three actual there are three religions that are in conflict and yeah but the dominant one is That's the like, one that your family mostly belongs to the many below one yeah uh. So they follow this religion called the Many Below One. Uh, it's quite different from Colchentrianism. It's not that different, but it's pretty different. And uh, he, uh, when he mentioned Dior and how it does not matter if that they are not real gods, one big difference is the fact that I and other Colchentrians believe that all religions and all gods are legitimized. I did think that was kind of weird, because I feel like you've talked about that before. Yeah, I, that's kind of why I was... That's why I made a face, if you didn't notice, but uh, there are other differences. So, uh, Sextus was just asking, in case he, my father didn't know that I belonged to... Uh, oh. I done, but I left my parents a note when I left. Gotcha, okay. 
that's that I don't really my family's not very religious, so that's never really been a point of contention with us, but like sounds kind of rough, so sorry about that. Uh, it's okay. You don't have to apologize. All right. Hey, so um, um, I know that you mentioned that there would be a beer. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sharing. I'm sharing my lemonade with. Oh, you. this is a this is a hen drink. I, I'd like a beer. Oh, uh, I go up to the bar. <laughs> you all are left at this table with a rooster who's just looking at you. <laughs> Ash, Ash turns back to Arden. He's like, "So what's the deal with you, like using a using a different name? Like, it, it was that like you just prefer Arden, or are you like on the run? Are you a fugitive? Or it's like, or it's like Arden, like what everybody called you, and the other was your just like full name? Logan's eating. <laughs> I brought the beer. <laughs> yeah, he just basically... Peck, 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 peck. Um, and he ate the My chicken, by dead. the way. <laughs> I'm going to have brought him, like, three, though. Oh, sick. Three beer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I didn't I didn't choose my birth name. I chose this name. Uh, that's pretty much it. Okay. Okay, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I assume... You also, you have a weird relationship with your dad? You could say that, yes. My mom, too. Oh, did it. whole family, really, right? Yes. Legitimized like, bastard, so... Mm -hmm. That does paint quite a picture. Um, oh, poor fella. Do we hear him, like... Do we hear him, like, <laughs> fuck or something when he says... <laughs> 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 Esther, is this rooster trying to be in on our conversation? Yeah, he's he's actually been adding some good points. He, uh, yeah, he said poor fellow. I'm sorry for the shield. I'm sorry that the shield is having pro trouble with their worship. That seems real, real hard. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he said it's uh, he's really sorry about your relationship with your dad too, Adira. That uh. And your and your relationship with with religion between your dad and you. Yeah, thank you, Alan. Right? Yeah, I'm Alan from earlier. He said, "Yeah, he's Alan from earlier." Yeah, I was on the floor. That was earlier. Yeah. Uh, All right. I was trying to just like act like there wasn't a chicken on the table. What's peck peck peck? Where <laughs> peck? <laughs> How did this, how Bye, did this rooster know to, like, come in? Oh, he, he, like, back. knocked on the door. Um, at this point, the bartender comes out and goes, Hey! Get out of here! You're not allowed in here! <laughs> back, 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 back. The bartender starts oh. to climb over the bar. <laughs> and it's coming over. Open the door. Yeah, Alan runs out and flies off. <laughs> <laughs> did you all let him in? No, no, he, he walked in on his own. Uh, I think someone was leaving and he just slipped through the door. Uh, and he <laughs> goes back into the That's kitchen. 22. Yeah, he just goes back into the kitchen. Adira's also like holding the beer that he pecked at. <laughs> <laughs> be like, she's the one drinking this. <laughs> After he walked away, I go, but I thought I did. Did I not open the door? No, you didn't. That was, that was someone else <laughs> gaslighting you, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, I apologize. That was just a little roleplay encounter. <laughs> but uh, you all were talking... So that wasn't important, right? We didn't fuck it no, up. No, 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 no. <laughs> that was... I have things that can happen in cities, and because of, like, the second Lion's Hope session, uh, anywhere in Hallandor, <laughs> Alan can show up at bars, so. <laughs> Perfect. Oh my God. Uh, so, I'm sorry. This chicken, he sounds like Mark. Uh, there's a reason for that, uh, but it's, uh... Yeah, I feel like uh, it is... Well, he's not I. If he sounded Australian, that was a mistake. Um... It's supposed to be from New Zealand. Um, but uh, I'm sorry, you all were talking in character, and it was very great. I apologize. 
Okay, go ahead. <laughs> we were talking about Arden and his dad. Arden is papa. Yeah. So, yeah, what, do you also have a hot dad? He does. <laughs> I mean, have you seen Arden? Yeah, I mean, I figured. What, are you not going <laughs> to ask me if I have a hot dad? Yeah. <laughs> you got something against halflings? Is that it? Ard Arden's dad Ash is just like the opposite it. end of the spectrum, where Arden's a twink, his dad is just like fucking shredded. <laughs> Ash, didn't you tell us that you don't know your parents? No, I know my parents. Jesus, I grew up on the street. I like we we were poor. I wasn't like. Oh, I thought you were like a homeless kid, like grew up on the street. <laughs> Jesus. So it's so just because we didn't have money, you assumed that I was a homeless orphan. Okay, when you say you grew up on the streets, <laughs> you you do kind of sound like I don't know a Charles Dickens protagonist. <laughs> Me? <laughs> no, Ash. <laughs> well, I don't even know what to think about this. <laughs> and he's going to finish his whiskey and uh, go get another one from the bar. Well, then, well Ash, do you have a hot dad? <laughs> <laughs> You need to stop, man. I'm only asking because it seems like everyone has hot dads. I guess the true question is, Arden. I'm sorry, Esther. Do you have a hot dad? It, cause it seems it seems like you might have, and that it might have created some problems for you. Honestly, I don't know. Like, why don't you know? I don't even. I don't really know who my dad is. I was raised by my sister. Oh. That explains why he's so into hot dads. Well, uh, do you have a hot you... sister? That's yes. a good question. Who cares? She's very attractive. Um, maybe, I don't know, we should do something about talking about our family since we've never done that and it seems important <laughs> to all of us. I mean, we can, we can certainly talk about our families. I'm... I'd be happy to talk about my family. I love my family. Uh, Ash, why don't you go first, then? Since oh. we all probably thought you were an orphan. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> Wait, please please tell me I was not the only one who thought Ash was an orphan. I did, too. <laughs> oh, no! No! no, I remember him talking about <laughs> his family before. Okay, but when you first met him... Oh, when I first met him, absolutely. Yeah, that's like... <laughs> this Hobbit know. Oliver Twist, of course. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I've got like... I've got like a family. Like, we were... We just grew up poor, that's all that it was. My dad and my mom... My dad worked on a dock, and then like, he hurt his back, so, you know, we kind of stopped being able to afford much of anything, and then... You know, like, you, you do things that maybe you're not supposed to to help people get by. It's just, it's fine. It's normal. It's Y'all are just all rich. <laughs> you're, all, you're all just so, like, <laughs> you're so rich. <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> just because I'm the only one here who's not, like, nobility doesn't mean that I'm an orphan who grew up on the street. <laughs> right, Wait, am I rich? Well, I don't, okay, maybe not you, but, like, you know, <laughs> you don't count in the same way, because you're, like, you know. But, like, I, I'm the it. one who, but I'm, like, but I'm the one who's not rich and who thought you were an orphan. <laughs> okay, well, look, it's not a perfect theory, but it, it, it did pan out two out of three times. <laughs> <laughs> what can it cost? Twenty dollars? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was really bad. Um, uh, sorry, you have a mother and a father, and you just were scrappy. 
Yeah, we were we were. That's a nice way to put it, I suppose. Yeah, we were scrappy. We just got we got by. That's all. It, we we led. Honestly, it sounds like you all had much more complicated lives in very different ways. But like, you know, we we just took care of each other. I only left because things started getting weird after I found Spark. But that's all. <laughs> Do you have any siblings? Yeah. They're young, though. Mm. How young? Are they, like, younger than you? <laughs> ben, I know, that, I know that we have a... <laughs> Benjamin, please breathe. <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm a little nervous to tell you anything about my family, now that I think about it. Well, I mean, if they're younger than you, they gotta be, like, real young, right? You're, like, what, 12? <laughs> Okay, I knew you were not 12. I will I would like to prepare myself that. on that. I know that. Yeah. How old do you all think I am? You have to be at least 17. 19. Yeah, no, thank, yeah. thank you, Arden, for knowing me at all. Do you know how old I am? You're like, what, 24? <laughs> no, I'm 21. <laughs> <laughs> How old am I? How old am I? This is a fun game. Twenty. No. Twenty-one. I look... No. Seventeen. No. Ash, did you just say thirty? Yeah, like you're something weird like that. Like you're. <laughs> no, I'm glad that I look young, but I'm only twenty-three. <laughs> and he, he like an he anime fanboy flips his hair. <laughs> Arden. Arden is... Arden's like 23. No, 21. Damn it. We're really young, aren't we? Yeah. We're just a bunch of fucking... Wait. wait. Children. Esther, you're 23. Yeah. Wait. Aster is the oldest. No. Oh, I mean, okay. honestly, nothing surprises me about him anymore, so... <laughs> yeah. I guess that's true, I am the oldest. Well, this is interesting. Um, so, like, were you guys hatched too? What? What? I don't what? even think we should... I, I don't even think that we should bring this one up. I think that we should just move on. It's like, there's an elephant in the room. Cool, you know, you stay, the elephant? You, you just, just the elephant say, be. nothing will surprise you, and then he comes out with something more. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, what are we going to do? There's an elephant in the room. We can't get it out of the room. <laughs> Anything we do is just going to make us, make us cover in an elephant shit. Like, we might as well just accept that he was hatched from an egg. And move on. <laughs> Aster looks around. Where the fuck is this elephant? <laughs> I, I would say nothing surprises me, but uh, uh, I've learned my lesson. <laughs> All right. Oh, and uh, by the way, back then, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I got really nervous when he asked us that question. Um, I think I've told Ash this. Mm -hmm. Don't know if I've told the rest of you, but um, that like motion for Arden and Adira to lean in closer. Adira leans in closer, although she is worried. <laughs> I don't really yeah. tell people this unless like I can really trust them, and I mean we're sharing a lot right here. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why I know we'll be safe in Yorn. My sister's one of the war leaders. Like, the war leader for, like, our clan. Like, a lot of people respect her. But, like, no one knows that. No one knows that I'm, like, her sibling there, but, like, she'll move heaven and earth. Wait, do we have a heaven? Yes, you... She'll move... Wait, does that exist? <laughs> she'll, move, she'll move the mountain in the skies to, like fuck people up if they fuck with me. This is... I don't want to sound mean, but this is going to come at me probably. And we got you. <laughs> well, I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Yeah, you got me. 
and I'm so happy to have you. Please know that I mean that as sincerely as possible. A dear old artist. Hey, what did she do? She holds your hand when she says, like, I mean that as sincerely as possible. <laughs> Ashley just thinks you're holding his hand. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm glad I have you guys, too. I feel like I now have, like, Three more siblings. Yeah, no, I I feel the same way. Although this feels very different. I never really got to see my sister growing up, not much. You know, she couldn't really be around me too much for, you know, worrying that someone would notice the connection between us and then use that against her. So she, like, kind of kept me at a distance. And then, like, my power started growing, and then she sent me off to the Druid Village, and they knew there, so, like, she would come out and see me from time to time, but it wasn't too often, but whenever she did come, it was really nice, and she would always spend a lot of time with me when she came, but it was, like, few and far between. And, and just to clarify, though, this is what I was talking about, when all of you are literally nobility, and I'm just the fucking poor little, poor little orphan boy, like, nobody <laughs> 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 <Lippity> fucking do <doodle. laughs> Well, I wouldn't really consider myself nobility. I mean, no one there knew me. The only person that would say they wouldn't consider themselves nobility, but would also say a sentence earlier that a war leader would move heaven and earth to save them, is someone who is nobility. No. <laughs> <laughs> You know what my dad could do if I got if one of us got kidnapped growing up? I mean, I'm sure your dad would move heaven and earth, sky and sky and mountains. Sky and mountains, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> he, would, and... he would he would try, but it would mostly just be going to his union and trying to get the dock workers to help look around the town. It would be more like a, be more like a gentle breeze and a pebble. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Man. Power dynamics, am I right? Yeah. Uh, I'll go next. I have, <laughs> the... <laughs> I have a father you've all met. Uh, Adira points at Aster and says, he has my mother. He is married to my mother. <laughs> uh, and I have... People in Jorn are married to a lot of people. Not an uncle. Not an uncle. Uh, also not in Yorn. Strict marriage laws in Yorn. Brothers, there's Pavrin, who is the eldest brother. I, I mean, I'm the eldest child in general, though. And then uh, Harshal after him, and then Kiram. So wait, does your mom, like, do magic, too? Because it sounded like your, your dad was saying that uh, your brother was, like, taken after your mom with the fire. Uh, yes. She's a very good spellcaster. My father is not as adept at spellcasting. He was a very good fighter. Uh... <laughs> Your is not going to say anything. <laughs> He's just lying. <laughs> Although, I, I do want to note really quick. I love that we're all sitting on the same half of the table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. We're all just cozying up to each other. We're very supportive of one another. <laughs> anyway... Uh... Yeah, my father is not as adept at spell casting, and um, it's always good to be good at spell casting. Uh, I agree. Yeah. So their marriage was arranged, but they did truly fall in love. So I was quite lucky. Uh, but and that's why I'm good at both fighting and spell casting because of both my parents. Does your do your parents do like the same type of spell casting as you, or well, your mom, or is it like? A different kind of spell casting. Um, like, do you get her power from a god as well? Benjamin, DM, would most? Uh, no, hers is more learned. Uh, oh, innate. Hers is uh, more learned, but also, it's it's very innate. She's very just powerful by herself. Uh. So, 
That's cool. I mean, I was somewhat able to cast spells before I exactly had a Shulama done, but never as powerful. Mm. Uh, um, what about I, your brothers? What are your relationship with your brothers? Oh, I loved my brothers dearly. I still love them. Uh, well, I helped train and raise a lot of them, given I was the elder sister. Uh, Pavrin was always a little less wanting of help, but uh, he was still very sweet. And uh, very good with a sword. He didn't have much love for the Warhammer, but I think he was just always trying to be very different from me and my father. Uh, Harshal is very good at spellcasting. Probably better than anyone in the family, but he kind of does not care as much. He's a little too lazy to do anything. <laughs> um... And then Kiran, as you've just heard from my father, he did purposefully light three of my mother's dresses on fire. <laughs> he's obviously very good at... He's probably... I think he always had more of my... our mother in him. Yeah. A but little prodigy. Was... <laughs> yes. Uh... And I'm... I love them very much, and I've... I helped a lot of them train. I'm glad. I'm glad that you. I know that things are a little rough, but like, I'm glad that you have a good family overall. Thank you. Yeah, we just don't see eye to eye on a lot of religious and therefore political beliefs. Uh, and I I left like a about five six years ago. Whoa, you're really young. Yeah, you're told to. You're told to marry young. Oh, so are you married? <laughs> no, I left before that. That's why I left. Uh, Ash, Ash just looks over like at Aster like, does he not know? <laughs> uh, I, uh, not very interested in that. That's yeah. That's not really like your bag, right? Uh. No, it's not. Uh, Arden? Why not? You don't want to, like, have someone to, like, come home to every night? Adira's face is, like, slowly getting redder and redder. It seems uh, like you were into it with, uh... Ash kicks. What was Ash kicks. Oh, no, he's too far away. Your what legs are name? also too short. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what Ash name? just swings his leg under the table trying to hit. <laughs> uh, you Aster. yawn. Uh, uh, what was the, God damn it? The girl's name. I'm muted. Listener at home. Shit. You yawn. Um, you yawn. Seemed like you wanted it with you yawn. Adira's hand red a face is now in her hands. <laughs> um, Ash cast prestidigitation to um make. Make a smell outside of like cooked meat or something. I'm just trying, just trying to distract Aster in any way I can. Smells like something good, good is cooking. Oh, can we go check it out and see what see what it is? Uh, I'm kind of full. <laughs> it might be the rooster um, who's learned to cook now that it's had some experience <laughs> around food and beer. That might be something worth looking at. A rooster cooking food? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll wait outside for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for the chicken. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Ash just nods. <laughs> I, I did said it to both uh, Ash and Arden. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> He's a sweet, he's a sweet one. Uh, but very stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Out of character, what I was trying to do was show... 
I don't. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, get what, <laughs> I get what Aster was trying to do, but it just, a deer, a deer is embarrassed to say it. So it's nothing to do with him. He just also can't read a room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Arden, do you... Arden, it's all on you, ma. Oh, well. Um, my mother and father are both very ambitious. Um, at the cost of, you know, a proper personality. <laughs> Um, my mother is far more intelligent than my father, but he doesn't know that. So, that dynamic is quite... tense. <laughs> um, there, I mean, there are the twins born before me, not elven years. Uh, Jean is... Uh, the spitting image of my father without the talent. Um, Dorothea looks quite a bit like my mother um, without the ambition. But she has the attitude. So when she was married off, uh, she didn't really accomplish much. Uh, I have a question if you don't mind me interrupting. Yes. When you say your mother, you don't mean your biological mother? No, or... um, the wife of my biological father, okay. who admittedly, um, a horrendous woman, but she did raise me. Okay. She did teach me to lie. So okay. there, there is that. What a wonderful thing you want out of a mother. Yes. Uh, can I, I, don't can know... I also, can I ask out of character? What is Arden's body language as he talks about his family, because I just keep picturing you getting tenser and tenser and tenser. It's, like, yeah. a little tense, but still, like, loose, but you probably wouldn't know. I don't even know if Arden knows if it's just the brandy or, like, actually opening up. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Actually having friends and feeling comfortable enough to talk. <laughs> I liked the workers at our state. They were always kind. That's good. You've got positive influences in your life. It's always a good thing. So what happened? Hmm? Oh. Yeah. Um, I just decided to leave. I was done with it. Oh, that's good. Um, it, it was during a ball. They were, they were holding some event. Uh, my mother decided she wanted to make some kind of move, uh, political uh, espionage, whatever you might call it, the intrigue, um, and she wanted me to play a part in it. I was, I, I was a weapon for her. I wasn't a child. That's just frowns at that. There's a reason I can pick locks. There's a reason I can hide things. When you're a child and uh, your mother hands you, you know, a vial of something and tells you to drop it in the wine of a visiting noble, you do it. And then when he starts choking, you just assume it's the wine. She sounds quite terrible. Oh, uh, she's awful. I can't see why you left. Ash's face is just like horror struck. He's just paralyzed with just, like, it. this is so strange to him. I do have a younger sister, too, but we never really see much of her. She stays in her room. Um, I think her entire purpose was to give my mother another child after I was born, and my father legitimized me. So you just have, like, okay, okay. So you have a mother who made you kill people when you were a kid, and a, a dad who's just, like, a dumb guy that thinks he's smart. I wouldn't say dumb. I would just say not as smart. Okay. But they keep your sister locked up in, a, like, a tower? 
No, like, they, they don't. They don't keep her. They just. She doesn't show the talent to them. That Jean or Dorothea did. Oh my god. And yet, neither Jean or Dorothea are as promising as your own parents. I don't think so. They might. I see. Certainly not as promising as you. No, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I'll admit it. Like, yeah, we went we went hungry a few times, but um, you loved each other. Yeah, I wouldn't trade my life for yours any day of the week, mate. Yeah, well, for for Fleur, the the youngest, I I don't. I wouldn't call it love, because we don't really interact, but she was the most agreeable of the family. She just never really interacted with many people. She stayed alone. I, feel like I, think, I, I think I get why she did that. Yeah. I mean, for all intents and purposes, despite my biological construction, um, despite my elfness, you know, I was considered a part of the family. It's just that they didn't really understand what family was, I think. Anyway. Ash, you... Ash, Ash is going to move over to uh, Aster's seat. I'm like, are you good, nun? Oh, I'm good, yes. I've been gone for two years, so... Alright. He's gonna take a Spark out and, like, look over to see that the bartender's not watching, and he's gonna just, like, tuck Spark into the uh, breast of Arden's um, jacket. Yeah, uh, Spark nuzzles up, like, to Arden. Trying to give some form of comfort. Yeah. Arden just kind of like rubs the top of his head. Spark like squints his eyes and leans into you. Aww. Um, so Where while I am uh, back on microphone, even though my dogs are probably still going to bark, um, I really am enjoying the Looney Tunes shenanigans that Aster has been getting up to. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been reading really Aster, uh, but just yeah. any any time that you try to get closer, um, I'll go ahead and tell you. At the at the moment, you're going to keep forgetting. I just want to talk to him. Jerry's going to notice that Aster's been gone for a while. Yeah, Ash realizes that he took Aster's seat, and he's like, where'd that guy go? Uh, you two stay here. Sure. I'll go look for him. Uh, Adira's gonna walk outside of the cavern, and... <laughs> I just realized Aster's also drunk as fuck doing this. Yeah. Oh That's why Adira's <laughs> going after <laughs> Not that Ash or Arden are inebriated in yeah, any way. Um, like... So underneath the tree, Aster, Adira, you're walking, and I think you have a pretty good idea of where he might have gone. Yeah. Um, but before you get there, um, Aster, where you are on the ground, um, you sort of open your eyes after thinking for a little bit, and you see uh, sort of leaning down in front of you, there is a absolutely beautiful half-elven man. Uh-oh. Hi. Hi there. You look a little bit lost. Are you? Uh, a little bit. I keep coming over here because I saw these things in a garden over there. And I walk up with a purpose, and then I forget the purpose, and I walk away, and then... When I lose sight of it, I remember what my purpose is, and I look back, and then I forget again, and it just keeps happening. And just, 
just want to talk. Oh, well, that sounds right difficult. Yeah. Why don't you stand up? I'll see if I can help you. He like, gives you a hand. I blush a little bit whenever he grabs my hand. Yeah, and he pulls you up, and it's it's firm but gentle. Uh. Now, uh, I'm going to need you to close your eyes. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to spin you around three times. Closing your eyes is going to okay. help you from getting dizzy. Okay. I think you've They're I think you've been hit by some type of controlling curse or something like that. I've heard about it happening around here. And he huh. spins you. Um, I need you to make a perception check with disadvantage. Oh god. Oh. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, an eight. All right, and there you are. Um, now, you should be able to go and do it. So, good luck there, lad. Oh, hi. And, uh, um, who are you? Sorry. Um, it's very rude of me not to ask. Uh, such a fine, nice gentleman. Oh, did I say fine? <laughs> I'm really not embarrassed by that. I don't know why I feigned that. Uh, my name's Don Kale. Don Tell? Don Kale. Okay. This is me, not Aster. Don, Don Tell? <laughs> like D O N T E L. Don Kale. Kale. Don Kale. Okay. And uh, what might your name be? Oh, uh, the name's Aster. Right. Well, and uh, he like, kind of like tucks his hair behind his ear and looks a little sheepish. If you ever uh, have occasion to need to be uh, decursed, uh, I stay in the lower city. There's a building with a red oh. roof on the fourth street. Lower city, red roof. Fourth street. Fourth street, yeah. Um, oh, uh, actually, there is something on me right now, I think. Um, can't quite manage to get as healthy as I should. Oh. Don't. Well, I'm not a holy man, uh, but I'd say you do look like you could use some help from uh, somebody with a bit of the gods in him. Oh, my God. We were literally just in a freaking cell. With that guy. <laughs> but, uh, Aster, and he reaches out and takes your hand again, and he gives it a gentle squeeze. I'll be seeing you. He gives you a very, very pretty grip. Oh, I, I hope so, in my dreams. <laughs> and he walks off, and Adira, you see a handsome man uh, walking away from Aster. Bye. Bye, Aster. Aster, are you... Huh? Esther, are you okay? Yeah. Um, did you see that guy? Yes. Oh my did god, he was beautiful. He didn't do anything to you, did he? I wish. Okay. Oh, um... um yeah? Well, he did... He said I was cursed or something. Um... He said he, he fixed it. Cursed. Yeah, he said he fixed it. Okay. He um, fixed it? Yeah. Um, tomorrow morning, after we get a good night rest, do you mind if I take a look at you, just to make sure? Y yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh, I mean, there is, like, another curse on me that I need to get removed, but, like, he said... He can't do it. I need help from a holy person, which I just realized we were locked in a cell for a while. Probably could have talked to that guy about it. Um, uh, hello? <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Okay, um, I'd say that this conversation took place going back to the Tuffins Inn. Yeah. Um, are you all getting rooms and wrapping up for the night, you think? Yes. Okay, so uh, the drinks, 
you the drinks and food are more than covered by the five platinum. Um, it is two gold for a single room. But you could have a room for two people with uh, only a single gold. Wait, what? So it's two gold for a single person's room, or you can have one room for two people using one piece of gold. This is more than a normal tavern would be. More I mean, than a normal inn would be. Baxter doesn't know what money is, so um, he'll pay it. He thinks it sounds reasonable. I, I didn't realize I was muted. Can we have a slumber party? I feel like that's the vibe for the night. Yeah. Yeah. I think we have a slumber party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you all go in, and uh, you're able to... They uh, take two gold to give you a double room, and then they push two extra beds in there. Oh, yeah. Um, we make a pillow for it. Sure. Um, and we're going to wrap up in just a second. Uh, but do you all look over anything or uh, try to test any magic items or anything like that uh, before you? Oh, yeah. Wait, Adira, Adira, check out what. Uh, let's take a look at that sword that you took off that dead dude. I'm like pretty drunk at this point, I think. Uh, well, Arden <laughs> took it off the dead dude. Oh, yeah, you need to attune to this. Uh, thank you? Okay. I, I give it to her. Um, I will do that. Okay, um, and so uh, you basically learn that, yeah, it is a Holy Avenger. Difference is it's, it's only a plus two for now, not a plus three. Mm -hmm. um, it has the regular Holy Avenger stuff, but with a bonus action, you can change what type of weapon it is because it is made out of quicksilver. Ooh. That kicks ass. That's so cool. Um, um I'm gonna cast identify on the chalice. What chalice? Uh, the chalice that I have. Oh, you don't have a chalice in your bag, bud. <laughs> oh, Aster. Oh, don't. Oh. And that's where we're gonna stop this session. We'll see you uh, in, in a month. <laughs> <laughs> Except, bye, everybody. <laughs> you know, Ben, if you wouldn't.